Hello, people. I'm here uh, to talk about uh, Bitcoin and uh, the philosophy of illegalism and squat ideology. Um, and Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a, a new cryptocurrency that we can use to trade between, between one another without, without central banks and without governments. And, and Bitcoin is uh, it's global, it's anonymous, it's uncensored and decentralized. And with this cryptocurrency, you can, you can trade with, uh, with different people. You can, and it's more than just money because you get access to, because the technology of Bitcoin is also with the blockchain. And with blockchain, you can, you can create all different financial tools and instruments. So a lot of people, when they see Bitcoin, they see it through the lens of, oh, it's, um, oh, it's, it's money or it's another currency, but it's actually, it's actually a lot more than, than just currency and money because there's, there's it's, it's more like a distributed ledger and that money is one application of, of this distributed ledger. Um, and, uh, and one of the good, cool things about Bitcoin is it's about bringing the trade back into the hands of us. The, the, we, are the, we are now the people that control our finance. Uh, we, can, we can loan the money, we can buy drugs online, we can evade tax, we can create Ponzi schemes, do different gambling things, and there's nothing the government can do about it. It's, it's, the, new, it's the new norm. People are, we all money launder all the time now, it's normal. And, um, and I make, we made one project called Dark Wallet, which is a, a Bitcoin wallet, which is to keep your finances anonymous so that nobody can see how you use your resources which is, it's important to have your anonymity because that in, when we're creating free markets, you know, if we want to have uncensored trade between individuals, which is, which is representing the true qualities of the human aspiration, the human spirit, then we need, to we need to have our identities protected because it's like, oh, you can do whatever you want. Just tell me your name and your address. Uh, but it goes, it goes much further than that. And we have a, a deeper long-term philosophy about what's possible. And we've got to go into this future uh, without fear, with, with accepting the new reality that is, rather than struggling against the, the things as they happen. Uh, and we've got to be bold in our, in our vision of how we do the things. Because, um, because why we live in a time of high science and high technology, yet people have less time to spend with their kids. People are working worthless jobs, you know, increasingly for less and less amount of money and, and doing silly work. It's, it's, entirely, it's entirely possible that we can, we can live better. Um, we can like, live in cool places with like hack labs and boxing gyms and cinemas. And, and all different, and, and swimming pools, and all different cool activities that grow you as a person around other liberty-minded people. I'm not, I'm not here to change the world or to save the, the earth. Like it's, in fact, like if what, most of the people want to keep, continue to do the things the same way they want to do it, then they can continue because the ecology is on the brink of collapse. The entire Ponzi scheme of the economy is, is crumbling. The, the, the states are becoming more fascist. The, uh, just the way that we have engineered society is not sustainable and just cannot con continue. And, and, they, and maybe they, they try to shame us with, with when we know what is right and we do the things that, that, that we, are, we are somehow meant to feel that as free people, we should subsume, we should castrate ourselves behind, be, be, beneath the power structures that, that, that we should somehow be shamed into, uh, into, into wanting our own autonomy and our own liberty. There's been this myth since the end of the Second World War of the great grand democratic institution where, where with all the people in it saying, oh, I am, I am neutral. I am an, I am an uh, independent arbiter on behalf of the great grand society. And, the, and, and this whole image of you know, the people uh, moving up the ranks based on qualifications and awards that are, 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 are given 
based on 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 neutral criteria and that we are we are people that that don't favor one group of people over the other and that the and that somehow these grand institutions manifest the will of the people and that there's this clear separation between the public and the private sector uh, while leaving a nice little safe operating space for NGOs and nonprofits but if anything this myth has not been true since at least the 60s and in fact, it's, it's more like there are different power groups with different amounts of power in a buyer's market. It's more like free market statism. Instead, we need to, we need to, real, we need to realize we are human beings. We are individuals and we are not neutral and we are not objective. And I trust in that guy because he inspired me and, and I feel the spirit of that guy and I will follow him. That is how we operate as human beings. And that is fundamentally the way that we've got to organize our economy, mutual between one and the other. Because if we, if we always need to, to put our trust or, or, the, we, or the, the things that we need to live is gonna come from that guy. He's always gonna treat those guys around him first better and then the other guys around it. And then you are on the outside of that at some other point, you know, instead, if we need the services that we need to live, we need to make them between ourselves because that's, that's, the, only, that's the only way that we can have the things serve us. And, uh, and, and money laundering is, is very important because if we can, we can launder the money, we can, we can hide the wealth because the, the state tax people through inflation and taxes. And not only does this contribute massively to state power, it enables them to control who can accumulate capital. And that's why the entire economy is rigged against us, against individuals. If you look in China, in China, they, they devalue the renminbi because uh, it's this whole idea of export-led growth, which makes the economy, makes it more attractive for foreign investors uh, to come and, come and invest in the country. And, and this makes the Chinese state and the Chinese industry strong, but it makes Chinese people poorer. And, it, and it's not that the economy doesn't work, it's the economy is working as it should to make industry and to make corporations and the big institutions more stronger, but it's working against people. And if you are, and it depends where your value system lies. If you want a, a future that is based on liberty, then that does not work for you. If you're an entrepreneur, you are an aspiring individual, you know, in the, in the Victorian times, there, there was this garden city movement and it was this whole idea of like engineering the perfect city where you would have the, 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 the residential complex and, you would have actually the factories in the center with a nice layer of trees around and then the residential at the outside and it is this idea of a, of, a, of a nice city where all of your needs are satisfied and they were, they were great and they're perfect except if you want to leave them in which they, they become a living hell, you know? And this is the whole mentality that we've like created with our society, this idea of managerialism that we were like manage the things for the greater good then that's that's and with the idea of some utopic visions and it's like it's like fuck you i don't want your vision of how i should live we want to we are sovereign people we want to be free together and and we're not here to force our vision on anybody else we and we want the free market because our our ideas are better we don't need to force people to adopt our ideas if they are better people will use them because we will provide a, a better standard of living or a, or a superior um, products or, or whatever for people that's what the CIC in, in Catalonia is, is doing they have the the Catalan cooperative which is a, a startup government that's trying to outcompete the government of the states by providing the basic services that people need to live and they say it's a cooperative of 10,000 different organizations with their own food network and they do, they do the dis distribution and, and, uh, and it's working and they have all the different tools that you can access to, to manage your business and work through that. And people use that because it's better and that's how we're gonna provide better things through the market. And, and Bitcoin is, 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 is a super cool technology because, um, because it give, it give access all of these different tools, and, and, and you can use these tools to, to construct all different financial services like the government. Now it's, it's illegal if I want to trade stocks or, 
or shares without a license or, or different financial derivatives or futures or options. But, but now with Bitcoin, we can do this decentralized and we can, we can trade shares and stocks and futures and different derivatives without, without needing government licenses, without needing to go through all that regulation, without needing to be a bank or a different financial institution. And, uh, and, and also the, we, can, we can have the resources and we can, we can, we can create different networks to, to, to move the money around to invest in different projects and create different initiatives. Like the, this t-shirt is from the Silk Road, which is a, a billions dollar drug market, which, uh, which was selling heroin and meth and cocaine and all of the different drugs and was operating for two and a half years before the feds went and shut it down and, and now the guy is facing 20 years in prison. But then as soon as they shut it down, dozens of other centralized drug markets sprung up. And in a game of whack-a-mole, they, they shut one down and 10 others appear. And now we are moving into the stage of decentralized drug markets with no central operators and no single points of failure. What are you going to do about it? This is the future. And, the, the fu and now with the rise of ISIS, which is, which is not really a state, but it's more of an ideological movement. And, it, and there's an article in The Guardian, which is titled the, 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 the concept of the, the concept of ISIS is a profoundly contemporary one. And there is this new emergence now of these parallel power structures in, in, our, in our societies. Which, is, uh, which are based around ideological movements and not, not so much the state. And as we go to, forward to the future, we're gonna have to give recognition to these, to these alternative power structures. It's a symbol of our times, something that we're, we're, is, is just a reality. And the thing is, is like all throughout history, people had to be dragged kicking and screaming into the future. But this is the things that are and, and and also, we have to look at the things unyielding because, um, because somewhere off into the distance is, is a new threat emerging, uh, a darkness that, that threatens our security and, and it starts to spread and seep into your culture at large and you start, to, you start to panic because this is a threat to my values. This is a threat to what has been accepted as true. And, but maybe if we sum up the courage to face these new times head on and, and peek behind the curtain, we can maybe see something that is something deeper and grander than we, any single human could have imagined, something, something better. You know, and it's not just about comfort and security, it's about human aspiration and spirit, which has been sucked dry from our lives. You know, the, the, uh, that our source of well-being and purpose comes from self-realization, from ourselves, not from the, the big society or the big institution or the, or the large, powerful nation state. No, it comes from, from, from we, we, are, we are explorers at heart. Human beings used to form uh, tribes or roving bands that would, would travel across from the steppes of Africa into what is Europe and, and, and Asia and, and all the challenges they faced, but together they were, they were solving the problems as they, as they came to them. And that is how we've got to think. Yeah, cool. Anyway, um, questions? Yep. Hi. Um, well, how would one start this? Would I have to go down to my cash point and pull out some cash and hand it to somebody to get into this uh, situation? And uh, a, a second point is, um, uh, well, perhaps forget that for the moment. If you could perhaps answer this question first. Well, you said you have to go to the cash machine and get money out or what? Well, how, how do I start? Ah, okay. Bitcoins, um, yes. there's, there's one website called localbitcoins.com 
and you can uh, put the name of a, of, of a city into the search box and it will come up with all these buyers and sellers in the city and you can meet up and trade uh, bitcoins for cash with them. Face to face? Yeah, face to face. And um, what happens if I'm just not interested at all and never have been in drugs and all that sort of stuff? I'm just a straight guy who Are wants to... Are you interested to, in liberty? I, I want to um, pay my bills and uh, send money to my family and my children and all that sort of stuff. Can I do it that way? Yeah, if, if you are interested in, uh, in freedom, then why hold the dollar or the euro or the pound? Hold bitcoins. So your advice would be to go to my bank and say, right, I want every penny transferred into bitcoins. Yeah, or if you, or if you're, if you want to hedge against the risk, you could keep some percentage in, mm. uh, in a fiat currency. But the fiat currencies are fundamentally a losing proposition. Mm. So if I were to hedge, I would only maybe keep 10% of my assets in in fiat. I, I, for me personally, I'm a bit of a gambler, so I go long 100%. Okay, thanks. So, okay, so would it be, you, you sort of say that if you want freedom or liberty, you should put all of your money into Bitcoin. But would it be possible that there would be um, conceptions of freedom that don't involve like transferring coins of any sort around? So you can imagine doing things for other people, uh, you know, just because you care for them, for example. Yeah, uh, mutuality is a fundamental concept for how uh, we can live and organize together. And, but the thing to realize is, uh, is uh, the capitalist system, or, the, or well, rather the democratic capitalist system, or whatever you want to call it, one of the fundamental tools that enables all of this to scale is the, the different financial tools and the contract law. What, if one of the oldest documents in human history is the Book of Hammurabi from 1500 BC, which is most of it dealing with contract law. That if you form a corporation, that you get access to, to this legal system that you can use with, with, to f establish different contracts between other organizations. You get access to all these different financial tools and this is what enables this whole framework to scale on such a level. Working together on an individual basis might work between 100 people, but once you start to get, get beyond that, the trust starts to break down. And that's why it's, this Bitcoin is very interesting because it now gives us access. Instead of needing the legal law, we now get access to mathematical law. And, instead of, and, and that means that we need to rely less or not at all on police, judges, politicians, courts, regulators. We now establish a purer form of, of organization or trust between organizations on a, on a, on a very pure level. Hey, um, so what, uh, what I hear you saying is essentially that uh, skirting banking regulations is an easy and good thing to do, that um, uh, buying and selling drugs is a good and easy thing to do, and so on and so forth. But what I feel is missing is a good functional definition of what freedom is and why the general public should actually care. Uh. Freedom for the pike is death for the minnows. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, freedom is about uh, being able to fulfill human potential. It's not a the thing is, is, is not a, it's not a black or white concept. You know, a lot of people have this uh, image that we will win the war, um, but there, there is, maybe we can win individual battles, but it's, there is no winning. There is a, sh a struggle or a, a process. And it, and it is in the nature of human beings to lie and to cheat and to deceive. 
but human beings who do not lie and cheat and deceive will find each other and and because they do not lie and cheat and deceive each other they 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 are, they, they can work together and they're more efficient and uh, and and rather it is this actual process of striving towards the that is what is valuable, the, what is lens purpose, and discovering the, the whole thing. Like, I'm not a, a believer in, in utopias or anything. Like, I'm, I think there are real problems that we need to fix in our world, and we need to escape the dogma and the ideologies and the blah, blah, and all the nonsense. Hi again. Hi. Uh, so I would have to meet somebody perhaps on a street corner somewhere with cash um, and then say bye bye to that cash because it's now a, a Bitcoin. Um, you know, I, it would be anonymous. My, nobody would know about it. The police, myself, anybody except this organization. Yeah, well, um, you can use different tools. It's like anonymity is not a, a perfect or a clear cut concept. You can use different tools to more further anonymize yourself. And the tools are getting stronger and better all the time. Uh, so so there's, there's all different tools now that you can also like, mix the money to like, launder it with all different people around the world. So that it makes it difficult to trace the origin of the money.